Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Cult Movie Tuesday right here on Night Owl Video. Today I am talking about the 1982 film The Last Unicorn, which is a very sweet movie and um, though this was only my second time watching this, I did not grow up watching this, um, but my good friend Shane uh, turned me on to this movie uh, many years ago and it quickly became one of my uh, favorite animated films. Um, so, But I just picked this up a couple years ago and uh, I was just feeling like watching an uh, animated movie and I picked this one and I'm glad I did because um, I remember really liking it the first time I watched it and I really, really liked it this time. So we're going to talk about cast, uh, production, uh, critical response, all that stuff. So I hope you'll stick around. Thank you to everybody who subscribed recently. As of the recording of this video, I'm at two, uh, 319 subscribers. So thank you to everybody who's recently subscribed. Thank you to everybody who's left comments, giving me the thumbs up on my videos. Um, I really appreciate your support, and it keeps me going here on the channel. Today, we are talking about The Last Unicorn. This is a family fantasy film from 1982, directed by Rankin Bass, who you may know as the team behind Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Frosty the Snowman, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, and the 1977 cartoon special The Hobbit. Yeah. So... This movie has an all-star voice cast. It is animated, obviously, so it's a voice cast. But we have Alan Arkin who, coming in from uh, Edward Scissorhands, Slum of Beverly Hills, and Little Miss Sunshine. He passed away not too long ago, so rest in peace to Alan Arkin. This also shows Jeff Bridges, who was in Tron, uh, of course, The Big Lebowski, Iron Man. And he was also in the remake of the John Wayne classic, True Grit, and did quite a good job in my opinion. This also shares a lovely Mia Farrow, who is in Rosemary's Baby, as well as the Omen remake. Uh, I don't think I've actually ever seen that movie. I, I, didn't, I heard it wasn't very good. Um, this also shares Angela Lansbury from Murder, the Murder, She Wrote TV show, as well as the uh, Knives Out sequel, uh, Glass Onion. I believe she passed away recently, too, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, if I am mistaken, my apologies. I hope I don't start an internet rumor. Um, and this also stars someone who has definitely passed away, and that is the incomparable Christopher Lloyd, who was in tons of, of course, Hammer horror films. And for the, for you youngins, he was Count Dooku in the uh, Star Wars prequels from the uh, late 90s, early 2000s. But uh, pro probably in my mind, more remembered for the horror um, and the Dracula films, because he was a great Dracula. Christopher Lee. Rest in peace, buddy. Uh, he was also a heavy metal singer, if you didn't know that, so you might want to go check that out. The synopsis for this film is, In this animated musical, the villainous King Haggard, played by Christopher Lee, plots to destroy all the world's unicorns. Already I don't like him. When a young unicorn, played by Mia Farrow, or voiced by Mia Farrow, learns that she's in danger and that she may soon be the last of her kind, she leaves the safety of her protected forest and enlists the help of... Sh uh, Schmendrick, played by, voiced by Alan Arkin, a gentle, albeit clumsy, sorcerer. Together they embark on a long and dangerous journey with one goal, to defeat Haggard and save the unicorns from extinction. Sounds like a pretty sweet little movie, doesn't it? And it is. This is based on the 1968 novel The Last Unicorn, written by Peter S. Beagle, who also wrote the film screenplay. The soundtrack was composed by Jimmy Webb, and the songs were performed by the uh, very popular 70s group America with the London Symphony Orchestra. So on that side note, if you like that kind of music, like, um, I always think, like, I, I was thinking, like, I should make a playlist of, like, 70s and 80s, um, or more so 80s fantasy songs, like, um, there's the one from Legend that's sang by Brian Ferry, and the, the Highlander song by Queen, which I love that song. There's so many good songs, and, and this one is sort of in that vein, like it's sort of that real anthematic um, fantasy rock kind of thing going on. So if you like that, you'll probably like this. Uh, while Rankin Bass provided the film's dialogue and story based on Beagle's work, the animation was actually done at Topcraft in Tokyo, Japan, headed by former toy animation employee Toru Hara, with Misaki Izuka being in charge of the production. The Last Unicorn pre premiered in 640 theaters in the United States on November 19th of 1982 and earned 
$2.2 million on its opening weekend. It grossed a total of $6.4 million in the U.S. and Canada. So this movie did quite well, um, especially for an animated movie of that time. Uh, sorry, my neighbors are getting ready to leave. Maybe you can't even hear their car. But anyway, um, this did quite well, um, like I said, considering it was an animated movie. But then, again, back then, th these kinds of things were pretty popular. If you think of these movies in the 80s, like Legend and Dark Crystal and uh, Secret of Nim and uh, Labyrinth and like all of these movies, right? Th this was kind of the, I mean, I'm really, really grateful that I grew up in that era, though. This was one that I just somehow I missed. But um, the other ones I mentioned were, of course, favorites of mine. In 2010, co-director Jules Bass revealed that Jeff Bridges called him out of the blue, volunteered to do this movie for free as the novel was one of his favorite books, and recommended his friend Jimmy Webb for the soundtrack. So, Jeff Bridges, what a guy, eh? A live-action version of the novel has toiled in development hell over the years, though it had reached various stages of pre-production at times, even with Sir Christopher Lee and Dame Angela Lansbury set to reprise their roles. As of 2013, ongoing legal disputes stemming from the animated movie, coupled with budgetary issues, have stalled the project, though author Peter S. Beagle has completed a new screenplay and still expresses hopes that the movie will one day be made. So, that was 10 years ago, so... And I have not, I, of course, I haven't really been following to see if it's going to be a thing, but it would seem to me it's probably not going to happen. I don't know. Although Hollywood's so desperate for ideas, they probably will. When negotiating for making this movie, author Peter S. Beagle told associate producer Michael Ch uh, Chase Walker that he specifically didn't want to work with the Rankin Bass Company as he hated their adaptation of The Hobbit and their famous Christmas specials such as Frosty the Snowman. When Walker told Beagle that they had signed a deal, he was horrified and threatened to pull out of the project, but eventually relented as they were the only major uh, animation studio willing to do it. Despite the skepticism, when Beagle met with uh, Jules Bass and Arthur uh, Rankin Jr. and liked their ideas and was happy they were determined to be faithful to the novel, so he then agreed to work with them. The uh, critical response to this movie was pretty good. Um, it currently holds a 77% on Rotten Tomatoes, if you follow that kind of thing. Um, some critics weren't crazy about the animation, um, but this has gone on to become a cult classic. Um, it's not, like, in my opinion, it's obviously not, like, the height of, like, Disney or Studio Ghibli or things like that. But um, it's like a little, it's like the little movie that could, you know? It's the little underdog movie, Um from 1982 that was you know just there and it was just doing its thing and I think the animation was cool I I, I thought the, the it's I mean again this is a, this is a kids movie right I mean um I mean it's it's fun for the whole family but I actually really like the design of the unicorn I thought she I thought it was really cute um I'd like to actually get like a t-shirt with that on it but um I really liked it um King Haggard was great in it like the animation of him the design of the backgrounds and everything was really nice. It's very colorful. Um, and it's just a sweet story. I mean, um, the music, again, by Amer with America doing the music, uh, with the symphony and that, I thought that was really cool. Um, I'm, I am, I kind of do like that kind of music, like fantasy soundtrack music um, done by a rock band. Um, and I, 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 thought, I thought it was really good. I, I thought it was really good. Um the voice acting was good. Uh, I thought Angela Lansbury did a great job. Mia Farrow was just sweet in it as the unicorn. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't have anything bad to say about this movie. Um, I really don't. I really don't. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I'm definitely going to be watching this movie again over the years. I think it's really sweet. And it's if you're looking for a good fantasy movie for the, the whole family to watch, or if you're just really into animation... Well, you know, or you like unicorns and fantasy kind of stuff. Uh, this has got a little bit of everything for everyone in here. Uh, I would highly recommend this film. You can currently watch this uh, for free on Plex, Roku, and Tubi. Or you can also rent it on Apple TV if you want to rent it um, and pay. 
Um, this DVD has for special features a uh, newly re remastered widescreen uh, digital audio, uh, The Tale of the Last Unicorn, a mini documentary, um, Escape the Red Bull, a set top game. I didn't try it. Oh, yeah, I did try. I did play the game actually. It was really fun. It's like you have to answer trivia questions and then you, um, you I guess you escape from the ball or something. Um, I don't think he. Oh, he's down here on the cover. He's the. The bad guy. Uh, this says Schmendrick's Magical Gallery um, and Original Trailer. So um, this is a, I don't know if I'm going to be able to see what year this is because it's white printing on a whitish background, but um, yeah, I don't know what year this DVD came out. Uh, it does not say. Nothing really fancy about it. There's the disc. Um, it is, of course, rated G. It's This is a, um, a uh, Region 1 DVD. Uh, Runtime is 93 minutes. This is put out by Lionsgate through Carlton, which I think is like the, the card company, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. Um, one of these like random things. Um, I also want to say Rene Overjoinus is in this. I remember he was the guy from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. He does a voice in here as well. Um, yeah, this is just a really sweet movie. I cannot tell you what year this DVD came out, though. Um, but it's probably early 2000s, I'm going to guess, or mid-2000s. But yeah, highly recommend this again. I won't go on about it too much more. But if you're looking for just a light, lighter fare, uh, Sunday afternoon family movie, uh, again, if you just like fantasy movies or animated movies with, you know, really great music and... Uh, sweet characters and some peril and you know some cool old school animation Rankin and Bass I I don't ever really I've never thought to myself wow Rankin and Bass animation is terrible I grew up watching all those Christmas shows so maybe that's why this I'm a little soft on this but um, this is old school animation this isn't the the new stuff with the CGI and all that this is the old school so if that's not your bag you may not like it but for us fans of the old school animation and 80s fantasies, mo fantasy movies, this is going to be your jam. Again, you can watch this for free on Pl the Plex app, Roku app, as well as are, are always are always reliable Tubi. So go check that out. Go check this out, I should say. Um, let me know your thoughts on this film. Did you like it? Did you not like it? If you didn't like it, why? If, and if you did like it, why? Um... Leave your comments below. Consider giving me the thumbs up if you like this review. Uh, consider subscribing to my, to my channel if you haven't already. I do Cult Movie Tuesdays every Tuesday, and I do horror movies on my Fright Friday featurette every Friday, so tune in for that. I also do thrifting haul videos, though um, I haven't had much success thrifting lately, but um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So anyway, let me know your thoughts on this film. I really like to know. Um, you may have also noticed that my background has changed. That is because I'm getting ready to move again. Hopefully for the last time. I don't know. I'm going to find out. But um, yeah, I had to take my shelves down so my movies are all packed up. But I still have a few left out because I these are mostly, well, those are VHS that just haven't been packed. But this stack here, right here, that's... Um, Movies that I've bought recently that I haven't watched that I want to watch. And then I've got a little Halloween decoration there because actually if you want to see it, I can show it to you. I actually made it. Well, no, I colored it in, but it's a little, um, it's a, one of those velvet things. And uh, you can, it came with a package of markers and you can color it. So I did make that, especially for Halloween. So, um, you know, this is the time of year when everyone, all the horror movie fans get go, get all nutty because it's the Halloween season. We also have our Friday the 13th coming up, um, which I believe is this, is it this coming? Yeah, I think it's this coming Friday. So um, I know I said I would do something about Friday the 13th, but I just didn't get my stuff together. So um, I am going to be talking about the innkeepers uh, this Friday, I believe. So you'll want to check that out. But yeah, so that's what's going on with my backdrop. In case you were curious, I will be moving. I'm recording like, 10 videos in succession and scheduling those because uh, the next three to four weeks of my life are going to probably get a little hectic. So, um, so you, but you will, I'm going to do a much, as much content as I can from now 
uh, or over today, I guess, um, so that it will carry me into November. And then once I get settled and have my new setup, I'll be able to resume making brand new videos. But anyway, the last unicorn. Leave your comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. And uh, like I said, consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thank you to everybody who has subscribed recently. And until next time, I will see you at the video store or at the thrift store or just out about somewhere. Or maybe I'll see you in a mystical land uh, running and prancing around with unicorns. Who knows? But until then, take good care of yourselves and I will see you in the next video.